Yeah, so for the understanding, you've got to try this one. The CPI rose from 114.3 in 2013 to 126.1 in 2020. Yes, so give it a try. Let's see by what percentage did the CPI rise. Check this. So the most current minus the previous divided by the previous times hundred percent. If you got this answer, then you are right. Do this also. CPI goes from two hundred in nineteen ninety one to two hundred and forty in nineteen ninety seven. Try, give it a try. Let's see. Got this answer, you are right. You got this answer, you are right. Okay, let's move on. The CPI rose from 129.6 in 2029 to 158.3 in 2020. 2045. Give this one a try. By what percentage did the CPI rise? Let me just wait for a few minutes. Give it a try. Let's see. Let's see what you have. Okay. If you got this answer, you are right. The next thing we want to talk about is interpretation of price level and inflation rates. So Price level in 2011 is 175. What does it mean? It means that the price of the basket in 2011 is 175% of its price in the base year. Or you can, you can explain it as the basket of goods that cost $100 in the base year cost one hundred and seventy five dollars in twenty eleven. The price level in twenty twelve if it is two hundred and fifty what is the interpretation? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. What is the interpretation? Okay, I believe with this interpretation here you can explain so it is 250% of its price in the base year. Or if, if the basket of goods in the base year the cost $100, then in 2012 the cost of basket of goods is $250. All right, so what is the inflation rate in Ghana now? That is something I want you to check. What is the inflation rate in another country in Africa now? I want you to check that one also. Okay, let's move on. Deflation. Deflation. Let's define deflation. Deflation is a sustained fall in the average price level over a period of years, so a continual persistent fall in the overall price level over a period of years. Deflation is a fall in the overall price level. If you remember the definition of inflation, inflation is a rise and deflation is a fall. It is harmful to an economy. Some of you might think when prices are going down, is it not good? It is harmful to an economy. We will um, discuss it. So around the world, um, the world experienced deflation in 1929 to 1933. In fact, that is what emanated, that is what, where macroeconomics emanated from, right? And in Japan also, 1998 to 2005, um, there was deflation. And all these did not help the economies of the world. So, what are the effects of deflation? What are the effects of deflation? We said it is harmful to an economy. So what are the effects? First of all, the deflation results in a fall in stock prices. Stock is shares. 
um, the, being a part owner of a company, you will buy shares of that company, and as the company do well, um, what happens is that the value of your shares will increase. So people might be buying more shares, and companies will will, will have enough funds to work. But when there is deflation, the value of your shares will go down, and the money you earn from the shares you bought will go down. So it's not a very good thing. Also, deflation results in a fall in real estate and housing prices. If you have houses you are selling, you will not get enough money from it because there is deflation. Prices of goods and services have gone down. Deflation also results in fall in consumer prices. This affects producers and sellers a lot because when there is a fall in prices, that means your profits will go down. Deflation also affects business profits. It pulls down business profits since their prices are down, but their debts and costs don't fall. So some many businesses borrow to produce goods and services and they sell them at particular prices. When there is deflation, their price has gone down, but you still have the debt to pay. The debt will not go down, the cost you have incurred will not go down. And lastly, deflation results in wage cuts to um, so wage cast to lower cost. Uh, firms decide to lower their cost by reducing wages. Assuming you are working in a company and your wage is reduced, you, you, you will not be so happy. So these are the negative effects of deflation. Let's add the last one. It results in rising unemployment. A lot of workers will be laid off during deflation and it is harmful to an economy. Now what are the causes of inflation? Inflation is caused, normally it's classified into two major um, causes. We have the demand pool and we have the cost push. Demand pool and cost push. Let's expound on these. For the cost push, is, um, it can be divided into three. We have the wage price spiral, we have the profit push, and the external shock. We will discuss all these in detail. Alright, so let's look at the demand pool. How do we define it? Demand pool inflation means there is excess demand and when there is excess demand it pulls up price. When there is excess demand it causes um, shortage of goods and services and um, suppliers or producers take advantage of the, of the shortage to increase their prices. So it's often caused, demand pool inflation is often caused by increases in government spending, such as increase in wages and salaries of government workers, and also building of infrastructure and other activities of government. By these, money comes into the hands of the public, and as they spend, they demand more goods and services will be in short supply, and suppliers seeing the demand uh, the demand rising, they will increase prices of goods and services. Let's look at cost push. Cost push inflation is defined as rising cost drive. Um, is defined as um, increase in prices that are as a result of rising cost. So when the cost of your production increases, you are tempted to increase your price. So the cost push inflation, as I mentioned earlier, we have three types. We have the wage price spiral, we have the profit push inflation, and the supply side shocks. Let's look at each and each one of them. Rising for wage price spiral, rising wages force companies to increase their prices. When when wages are increasing, that means your cost of production will increase because you are paying your workers and you have to increase their wages. So you after producing everything, you increase your price. So this is normally blamed on labor unions or shortage of workers. Since labor unions are the date for increase in prices, it is blamed on them. And if there is shortage of workers, um, employers are, are forced to increase wages so that they will attract uh, workers into their, into their companies. And so, um, since 1980s, this has never been a problem at all because there are so many workers who are even looking for jobs. So most of the times wages do not really rise. The next is profit push inflation. 
in many industries there are only a small number of companies a small number of companies in many industries right so it is easy for them to raise prices to protect their profit margins so if you if you are in what if you are having a company and you want to increase your profit you just push the price up so that your profit will increase you protect your profit from coming down that is profit push inflation the last is supply side shocks supply side shocks so dramatic and unexpected increases in the prices of key materials also results in inflation such as oil such as energy when electricity cost increases when oil oil is used i mean crude oil it is used for so many things and it's sometimes um the, the, the materials we get from crude oil sometimes serve as raw materials and inputs for production if the price go high it means your cost of production has gone high and you need to increase your price also we'll pause here and continue in the next slide